meaning this hive. There are a couple of older emerged cells and because we couldn't find the queen and so we were a little bit worried because there are emerged cells that there's another uh, virgin queen present and running around that we just weren't spotting. We want to make sure that the virgin's not in there. Um, so sorry, I'm already halfway through this because I started and then realized that, oh, we should totally film this. But um, so underneath, if you come a little closer, Ryan, um, before we started, we put a queen excluder on the bottom here. You probably can't even tell because there's so many bees, but there's a queen excluder here. Um, we put it between the bottom board and the brood chamber. Um, and then I'm going through right now and I'm shaking every single frame out in front of the hive. Um, and that way all of the worker bees, they can come back in. But if there is a virgin queen, she definitely won't be able to come back in. Um, so yeah, that's what we're doing right now. I'm just gonna keep going. Always doing a quick check just to make sure that there's no swarm cells or anything like that. But I actually haven't seen any eggs in this in this hive, so I don't think that's a huge issue. I think they're queenless. want to hold it firmly by both um, both fingers of the frame and then give them a nice shake. Oops, that one went there. Be sure that you put your frames back in the order that you took them out. because there's not really any brood in here but it's a good um, sort of best practice. So I have my queen in a cage here and I'm going her back into the hive, introduce her to the hive, um, but she came in a cage, a plastic cage with a bunch of attendants to look after her. Um, she won't feed herself if she doesn't have workers to do it for her so that's why she always comes with attendants. Um, and you want to take the attendants out actually because they can um, interfere with the colony accepting the queen. Um, so you don't want anything that could cause the colony to not accept the queen. So what I did is I sat in uh, the trek with all the windows closed and I had my veil in my lap. So I was working inside of my veil. So I had the old queen cage that she was in like inside my veil and um, I opened it up so that even if she got out, she would still be stuck in the veil, she wouldn't be able to fly away, and even if she got out of the veil, she would be in the truck and she wouldn't be able to get out either. Um, and then what you do is you get the queen in kind of one hand and you make a, a fist very gently so that you don't squish her so she has lots of room in there, but you make a fist. Um, and then you position the cage so that the whole is facing down and then you move your thumb out of the way put it like that so that the only way that she has to go up is into the cage and she'll usually just crawl right up into the cage because she's going towards the light so just um, yeah you don't have to really force her in or anything like that that's a really good trick um, and yeah so the only thing that you need to know when putting um, a cage queen into the hive is that you want to put her in between two brood frames. Um, you want to make sure that the candy side, we call it candy, but it's, it's technically fondant. Um, so you want to make sure that the fondant is facing down. If it's facing up and it gets really hot in the hive, then it could melt and trickle all over her and um, it could drown her even. So that's not what you want to. You always want to make sure that it's down. So even if it melts out, it won't be melting all over the queen. And then you want to make sure that the side with mesh 
is in between the two frames, not facing into the frame, just so that she has air and she can breathe. Um, and the reason that we put her in in the cage, not just, you know, throwing her in loose, um, is because the colony will actually need some time to kind of get used to her before they accept her. Um, if you just threw her in, it's likely that the colony wouldn't accept her, they would kill her, um, because they'd be like, ah, you don't belong to us, I don't want you. Um, so you put her in the cage so that they have time to get used to her and then by the time that they've eaten through the candy it's been a couple days they've gotten used to her and her pheromones that she's putting out um, and they should just accept her so I'll put her in right now just in between you can see that the mesh side is facing out so she has room to breathe and then just adjust the frames around it to make sure that it's really uh, holding her in. And that's the whole thing. You've introduced your queen. Um, so you, after you've introduced her, you don't want to disturb her for a little bit. Um, give her at least a week before coming back and checking her. If you disturb the colony right after you've put her in, then there's a good chance that you can stress them out and they will reject the queen, which isn't what you want. So close her up, give them at least a week, and then go back and check on them at least a week. Now that it's getting into July, and you're probably gonna come upon a lot of hives that have a lot of supers on it like this, that unfortunately doesn't mean that you can't go into the bottom or don't have to still go into the bottom to do brew checks and health checks. Um, so we're definitely gonna be regularly going through our hives. It just means lifting off all those supers and, and putting them back on. So for this hive right here, we introduced a mated queen about a week ago. Um, so I'm gonna go through this colony to check for acceptance for that queen. Um, so your timing in terms of checking for acceptance is gonna depend on whether you put a cell in or put in a, a cage with a mated queen. Um, if you put a cell in, you wanna leave it for a good two weeks to make sure she has time to get mated. Um, in this case, because it was a, a cage with a mated queen, um, she should more or less get started laying right away or at least maybe a day or two after they release her from the cage. Um, so you only really need to wait about a week. Um, so what I'm gonna be looking for will be eggs um, to make sure that she was accepted. Ideally, I'll, I'll find her as well. Um, but at the very least, if I find a bunch of eggs and young larvae in there, I know that she was accepted and she's in there laying. If you watched our previous video on making mini mating nukes, you'll recognize these little nukes. About two weeks ago, we put some queen cells that were grafted into these nukes. Now enough time has passed that the queens have had a chance to go out and get mated, which is the purpose of a mating nuke. Today we're going to go through the nukes and harvest our newly mated queens. So you can see the remains of the queen cell sitting on the lid there, so we know that she at least hatched successfully. Steph is going through each frame looking for the queen. You also want to make sure that you see eggs, so you know that the queen got mated successfully and that she's actually laying.
you can see that Steph has spotted her queen, so now she has to catch her. When you're catching queens, you always want to grab them by the thorax and never by the abdomen. The thorax is nice and hard. It can take a little bit of pressure. The abdomen is soft and contains a lot of organs and it can't take that pressure. The other option is that you can pick her up by her wings. Make sure that you get both wings, otherwise she can flip around and get out of your grasp. So now Steph is going to mark her before caging her. To mark the queen, we just use a normal paint marker. You just want to carefully make a nice visible dot on the back of the queen's thorax, like so. The next step is to cage the queen. You can use any style of cage that has a candy plug, so not a plastic roller cage. You never want to try and force her in the abdomen first, as she can get hurt. Place her head first and she'll usually crawl right in, then just place your fingers over the hole until you can put the plug in. Next, Steph is going to place attendants in the cage to care for the queen. You want to choose young workers, so pick them from a brood frame. Don't choose any that are too young, so no blonde, fuzzy, freshly emerged bees. Grab the worker by both wings, which is easiest to do when her head is in a cell. If you only get one of her wings, she can twist around to sting you, so if you only get the one, just let her go. Normally, the standard is to place at least five attendants in each cage, but today we are going to be introducing these queens right away, so we're only doing three. One of the trickiest parts can be to place attendants in the cage without letting the attendants that are already in there out, so be mindful of that and use your fingers to keep them inside. Once all of your attendants are safely inside the cage, the last step is to place the plug of candy firmly inside the cage, and there you have it. You have successfully harvested your newly mated queens. Because it's a million degrees out today, we're just making sure that we keep all of our caged queens in the shade so they don't overheat. Um, in particular, you wanna make sure that you never leave caged queens on top of metal, um, metal lids. That is a great way to overheat your queens. Um, so today we are going through and doing a mid-season harvest. So we are taking a whole bunch of our supers off, which is great because it's been a crazy honey year. The uh, hives are getting pretty tall. They're getting pretty unmanageable. So it's going to be really nice to move some of those supers out of the way, these heavy supers. Um, so what we're doing here is we have bee escapes and we are making towers of full supers. So this is a bee escape and a bee escape is a piece of specialty woodenware for harvesting honey. Um, and you can see it's basically like an inner cover with a hole at the at the top that the bees can get into and then this part here is a maze this triangle so there's entrances in the corner or exits in the corners that they can get out of but the idea is once they have exited the super through this maze they won't be able to figure out how to get back in what they'll do is they'll exit out of the supers and into here on our towers we have a, a, a brood chamber a box for them to go into but then because it's a maze, they can't get back up into the supers, so um, that's how you get bees out of your supers in this method, so that it's nice and easy to harvest and you're not bringing all of your bees back to your honey house or your kitchen. We have a bottom board um, and then just an empty box. There aren't frames in it. It's not, it's not a big deal. The bees aren't going to stick around. The idea is that they exit through the escape and then they eventually will leave this box and go back to their original hive so it doesn't need frames because they're not sticking around um, and then these are all of our um, full supers and so the idea is that um, once it gets cold or once they want to leave to forage they're all going to exit out of the supers through the escape into this box and then they're not going to be able to get back up so they're all going to leave out of this box and go back to their original hives um, and so you can see we've made it kind of high but we don't want to make it too high you only want to be able to do it to the point where you can lift it safely you don't want to make them you know 
a million boxes tall and then have it fall on your head. That's not a great idea. So you can see this is one that's already done. This is one that we're still working on. We're still going to add some more supers to it and you can see it's full of bees and we don't want it to be full of bees. So that's the whole idea behind this. Um, and then when it's done, you just put an inner cover up at the top. Um, and then we're also going to go around and tape up any holes or cracks in the boxes because if there's other ways that they can get in that's not through the maze in the escape then that's a problem the escapes won't serve their purpose because they'll just find another way to get in so that's not what we want so a crack like this is exactly what you want to look for and tape up the beads could definitely get in and out of there so you want to make sure that they can't okay so as you can see we have taped up all of our cracks that bees could potentially get into and next we have our inner covers on already they've been taped up so we're just going to throw a lid on and then we're going to throw a heavy brick on top to try and uh, keep this nice and secure so the bees need some time to make their way um, out of the supers through the bee escape. Um, it's kind of weather dependent. Cold nights, but also like sunny, hot days where the bees can go foraging. Those are two things that draw them out of the supers. Um, usually we leave them on for at least 48 hours before coming back to extract. Um, when you come back, you might need to bring a bee blower or um, a bee brush just to get those last few out. Um, but leave it a few days, but not too long, no more than 72 hours, because if you leave them for too long, the bees are smart and they'll actually be able to find their way back through the maze, which is not what you want, defeats the whole purpose. So ideally 48 to 72 hours and then come back and you are ready to harvest and extract.